that's a really nice mic stand. I'm really just going to fine tune that. Oh, that's nice. Hey, um, uh, I'm going to tell you a little story. Any uh, Harry Potter fans here? Woo! Oh, big Harry Potter fans. Okay, great. I don't give a shit about Harry Potter. Um, really did, never saw the movies. I uh, saw, well, two and a half of them maybe, never read the books. Don't really care about Harry Potter. The other part of this you need to know for this story is I'm a big roller coaster fan. I love, love roller coasters. Favorite thing. So, uh, my day job, I'm a corporate event producer, which, me, which means I get to travel around glamorous parts of these United States, Indianapolis, Birmingham, <laughs> Alabama, Las Vegas, and I get to hang out in um, you know convention hotel ballrooms, all right, where the temperature is a, a balmy 72 with a chance of chandelier. Um, pretty boring. It's not really very exciting. But I was in Orlando for a gig. It was one of these long 10-day kind of gigs where we're working 14 to 16 hours a day kind of craziness. And towards the end of the event, we, we sort of had a quiet evening. None of us on the production and event crew knew kind of what our plan was. And the surprise was we were going to go with the clients, and this was just a few years ago, to the magical Harry Potter world at Universal. Orlando Studios. We were going to see this thing. And I was like, well, great. Let's get out. Let's go do something. It'll be fun. I'm a little tired, but let's all go out and have a great old time. So uh, they put us on a bus and we we get to Orlando, uh, Universal Studios, and they send us first to the New York area for a little food. And I see the roller coaster that they got in this New York sort of city area. And it's called Red Rocket. And, and it's a weird name because it feels like maybe it's your dog's genitalia or maybe a euphemism for a female sanitary pro product. I don't really know. Um, but it's this great roller coaster. It's kind of short. It's red. It goes straight up. It goes straight down. It spins. It does loops. It corkscrews. It looked great. Just great. So we, we walk right up because there's no line because this is a private event. There's just us. And we get on this thing and I can program my music and I, I get on this roller coaster. We go. We go up. We go down. We spin around. We corkscrew. We come back. Ah, it's great. And so um, I'm sitting there, and I, I look at the, the woman, teenage girl, really, and I'm like, well, can I just ride this again? And she says, no. You need to get out of it and walk around so you can have keep your equilibrium. I'm like, okay, great. So I run around, and I ride the ride two more times. Great. Now I'm a little peckish. So I go down. I down two Jack and Cokes and a couple slices of pizza. Spend the time kind of walking around the area. I check out the Twister event, which is some sort of like rain and wind. And I'm like, whatever, let's go ride Red Rocket again. Let me ride Red Rocket again. So I ride it two more times. Now I'm feeling a little like, okay, I don't know how this is going to be exactly, but I'm dealing with it. So we, they're like, okay, we're closing this down. We're going to walk you over to the magical Harry Potter world. So we're walking through the back of Universal Studios Orlando. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm questionable at best at this point. And as we get there, it's the magical Harry Potter. It looks just like what I saw in the movies, right? It's got some castle or towers and shit. And there's this thing in front of me called Butterbeer. And I had the wherewithal to pass on that. I was like, I don't think that sounds good for me right now at all after the two Jack and Cokes and the two slices of pizza and the five roller coaster rides. So I'm like, okay, let's just get this thing done. Let me go on this ride and we can be done. My buddy grabs me and says, hey, one more roller coaster before we go on the Harry Potter ride. It's called Twin Dragons. I was like, okay, what happens? He's like, it's great. As you ride it, you pass by this other one. It's almost like they're going to hit. I was like, okay, this could be very exciting, I think. I don't know. So we get on this ride. It's an outdoor ride at night. There's no lights. I can't see anything. I can't see another train coming at me. I don't see this. All I see are my feet being flopped around in front of me as we're going up and down and around in circles. I don't know shit. Okay, we get off of that ride, and I am nearly cooked. Like, this is, I don't know how I'm standing at this point, but we make our way up into the Hogwarts castle, and there's hanging candles, and there's all a bunch of cool shit. I don't know any of the references, so I can't really tell you much about that. So we finally get up to the onboarding, offboarding area, and we get into these little boxes, these, like, little TARDISes or something. 
Now I know I'm mixing my genres, but that's the only way I could describe it. It was this little box. And they, it's four of us across, and they set me down, and a little safety gate comes down, and it's a little tight on my stomach. It's a little like, oh my God, like, oh, God, this is not good for me. And so I, I look at the woman, a teenage girl, I'm like, it's a little tight. She said, can you last five minutes? And I was like, before I could answer, whoosh, the ride takes off. And suddenly we're flying through this castle, and there's kids on broomsticks, and I'm thinking, is this a bewitched reboot? I don't really know. They slam us into this video screen, and there's all these jackins and all this sort of stuff. They fly us out, spin us around, and back into the video screen, and, and, and the ride just stops, dead. The lights come on, and it's just this sort of round dome of a video screen, and we're kind of hanging above the ground a little bit, kind of tucked in there. And I hear in the distance the British voice, security voice, safety voice, which I felt was very authentic to telling me the ride was broken, which I already knew at that point. And as I'm hanging eight feet above this video dome, I look down, and it's just covered in vomit. Just covered in vomit. And I'm thinking to myself, this is, could be me. This could very well be me. And before I could do anything, whoosh, the ride takes off. We're spinning around, and suddenly there's a spider, and it jizzes all over me. I don't know what the hell is going on. And then they slam us back into the onboarding, offboarding area. I see all my friends from work, coworkers, clients, VPs, everybody. The thing lets me go. I get up, I projectile vomit and can what can only be known as the piscine, piscine, I don't know, point Gryffindorf. <laughs> Thanks everybody.